In this video, we're going to look at how we edit photos and videos in the Photos app on the iPad. This includes making adjustments, adding filters, how we can crop and straighten photos and videos, as well as how we work with portrait photos, live photos, and bursts. Let's take a look at how we edit our photos using the Photos app on the iPad. Let's go over to my iPad. So I'm in my Photos app, and before we get started, I first want to say that most of what I'm going to show you will work with both photos and videos. You can make adjustments to videos just like you can with photos. You can apply filters. You can crop and straighten videos. So I may mention photos more than videos, but in most cases you can apply what I'm going to show you to videos as well, as long as they're in the Photos app. Also, I am using iPad OS 16 as I record this. All right, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to take a look at is the edit layout, where the different tools are when we're editing a photo or video on the iPad. So let's go and open up a photo. What I'm going to do is open up this photo here. I tap on it. If I want to edit this, what I do is I go up to edit in the upper right hand corner. When I tap on edit here, what happens is as the screen changes, the photo shrinks, and we have all of our different editing tools that circle around it. So let's go over some of these tools. I'm going to go over them in detail, but I just want to show you where they are right now. So we have our undo and redo. If I make a change to a photo or video, what I can do is undo that change. And if you apply like five changes, you can undo them one at a time and then redo them. If we go over to the right, we can mark up our photos. This is where we can draw on them. We have more. When I click on this, I'm able to download extensions or apps from the App Store. And these apps may offer more options for editing your photos and videos. In this case here, I could edit this photo with PS Express. I'm not going to talk about these third-party apps, but you can go and download them. This is where they're going to be if you want to take photos to another level. If we keep going to the right, we have these double arrows. When I tap on this, what it's going to do is bring the photo larger and then it floats all the tools above the photo here. Now what I'm going to do is just make it smaller here so then we can easily see the tools. But generally speaking, I do like to have it in the larger mode when I'm editing. But we want to make sure that we take a look at these tools here. Over to the right, you're going to see it says done. It's dark gray. That's because I haven't made any changes to it. When I make a change to this, let's go and apply a filter. You're going to see it says done. And all I have to do is just click on it. And I've applied that edit. Now when you apply an edit, you can revert it. You can revert it back to the original photo. So this is lossless editing. So I go back over to edit. And if I want to revert back to the original, it doesn't matter how many edits I made to this photo. If I click on revert here, what it's going to do is revert back to the original. Also, before I revert back to the original, when you tap on the photo here, what it's going to do is show you the original photo. So you can compare your edits. I tap on it. We can see it's a little more dull. And then it brings us back to our edited photo. What I'm going to do is revert this here. And now we're going to go back over to edit. Now below that, we have all of our adjustments. When I swipe up here, you're going to see that I can adjust the exposure, the brilliance, the highlights. We have a number of different adjustments here. And when you select one, let's go with highlights. If you go over to the right, you can swipe up here and then you can adjust the highlights. So that's how you make your adjustments. You're also going to see that there's a little clock here where my cursor is. Watch what happens when I make adjustments. We can see that it is changing there. If we go over to the left, you're going to see that we have three tools here. Now, depending on what type of photo you have, it may have more tools. If it's a portrait, you're going to have a fourth tool. So the first one here is adjustments. This is where it's going to go to by default. So when I select this, I have all of these adjustment tools. If I want to apply filters, I click on this, and now I can apply filters. And then if I want to crop and straighten my photo or video, I click on this, 
and now I can crop and straighten it. So this is where we select what we want to do. And again, we will have more tools depending on what type of photo it is. So that's a look at our editing tools. Now before we actually start editing, I'm going to show you how you can duplicate a photo in case you wanted to have two different versions of a photo. Maybe you want to have a regular photo, a color photo, and a black and white photo. So what we're going to do is take a look at how you duplicate a photo so you can do this. Or maybe you want to crop a photo and you want to have the original photo and then the cropped photo. Again, what you'll have to do is duplicate it. So I'm going to tap on done. It's going to take us back to our photo here. And let's say, I'm actually going to choose a different photo here. I'm going to go with, I have a folder here of adjustments. And I'm going to go with this photo here. What I would like to do is duplicate this. Maybe I want to keep this color version and I want to make a black and white version. I do that by applying filters. I'll show you that later on. In order to duplicate it, all you have to do is just go up to the More button in the upper right-hand corner. We don't edit it. We have to duplicate it before we edit it. When I click on this, what I'm able to do is duplicate this. Now, it does make a duplicate of the photo. So if I go back over to my library here, you're going to see that I have two photos there. So it does make a duplicate of the photo. But it also allows you to make edits to one, or what you could do is make different edits to either one of them. If you no longer want to have this, what you can do is long press on it, and then what you're going to see is delete, and you can delete that photo. All right, now let's take a look at some of our editing tools. We're first going to look at how we auto-enhance a photo. When we auto-enhance, it's a great way to get started with editing or making adjustments. So what I'm going to do is go over to this photo here. I tap on it. And then what we do is we go up to edit. We do have to edit it. And then you're going to see that it goes to my adjustments by default. And our first adjustment is the auto enhance. When I tap on this, it's going to apply various adjustments. And then what we're able to do is turn off individual adjustments or we can turn them all off and then turn on individual adjustments. We can also make further adjustments once we use the auto enhance. So let's go ahead and turn this on. You're going to see that the photo will brighten up a little bit. I want to view the original. What do I do? I tap on it. There's the duller version and now it's brighter. So that's a good start. If we look over here on the right, you're going to see that I can see how much adjustment it made for each one of these different adjustments. Now, what I'm able to do is turn these off individually. Maybe I want to turn off the brilliance. I want to leave all the other adjustments on. What I do is I tap on this and it only turned off the brilliance. It did not turn off any of these other adjustments. To turn it back on, I tap on it again, it turns it back on. I can do the opposite. I can turn them all off. All I have to do is just go back over to my auto here. I tap on it. It turns them all off. I did have to tap on it twice. They are all off. And now what I'm able to do is just turn on brilliance here and it's going to make that adjustment. So I tap on it. And we can see that it made that adjustment. I did have to tap on it twice. It turns it off first and then it turns it on. Now from here what I'm also able to do is further refine this. So what I'm able to do is take this little slider here and make further adjustments. What I'm going to do is turn it back off here. And I'm going to go to Done. And it did not save any edits. So that's how the auto enhancement works. Let's take a look at a few of these adjustments here that we have individually. So what I'm going to do is go back over to Edit here. And if we look here, when I swipe up, we have exposure. I swipe up. I have brilliance. This is going to make it brighter. And again, all I have to do is just go and slide this up or down. I have the highlights. This is going to be the lighter colors, the whites. So when I adjust this, it's going to affect my clouds, but it will not affect my darker colors here. So I 
swipe here and you're going to see that the clouds are being adjusted, but not so much the darker areas. This is what the shadows are, the dark areas. It's going to do the opposite. A great photo for this demonstration is actually this photo here. Now this is a bridge that is just probably about 20 miles south of me here. And there's actually a lot of detail in this bridge. This is the shadows area here. So when I go over to edit here and I swipe up to go to my shadows, what it's going to do is bring out the detail in this area here, but it will pretty much leave the clouds alone because those are the highlights. So watch what happens when I move this adjustment around. We can see we're getting more detail in the bridge but for the most part, it is leaving these clouds alone there. You can see that it's not affecting them because that is the highlights. So when I go over to my highlights here, now what it's going to do is affect these clouds. But you can see that it doesn't really affect the shadows. We swipe up. We also have our contrast. We can add more contrast. We can make it brighter. We can also adjust the black point. How dark is it going to be? We have saturation. Do we want to have more color in there or less color in there? We could almost make it black and white, or we could make it black and white, actually. But I'm going to show you how you can do that with filters, too. And then we have vibrance, warmth. This is going to adjust the yellows in it, make it a little bit more warm. And then a little more cool, adds more blue to it. We also have tint, which is the reds. We have our sharpness, our definition. Noise reduction, this is great for nighttime photos. When you take a photo at night or when it's dark out, you'll get a lot of noise. So what you can do is you can reduce that noise a little bit. And then we have vignette. Vignette just adds darker areas to the corners. A great demonstration for this one. It's my, one of my favorite places to add a vignette. If I go to vignette here, I have... This here, what I would like to do is put the focus on that jet above the beach. Well, when we add a vignette, watch what happens. So I swipe all the way up. And now I'm going to take this and slide it down. You can see it's darkening the corners, but the center here still is the same. It's not changing that. So basically what you're doing is you're putting a little bit of a focus onto the center of the photo. I'm going to tap on Done. Well, actually, let's go and brighten this one up a little bit, too. I'm going to use Auto Enhance. There, it's a little bit brighter. Now we go back over to Vignette, and we're going to add a little vignette there. And now when I tap on this, there's the original, and there's my adjusted photo. So that's how we work with adjustments. You can see we have a lot of different adjustments there. Another tool that we have at our disposal is filters. What we can do is we can apply filters to our various photos and videos. Again, I'm showing you with photos, but we can do this with videos as well. So I'm going to go over to my album where I want to filter some of these photos here. So I have this photo here. This is Durango and Silverton. I think this would be really cool if it had a black and white look to it. Well, I can easily do this with filters. I can apply a noir effect. I can apply different filters to it. I can even make adjustments to it after I apply the filter. To do that, what we do is we go up to Edit. And being that it goes to our adjustments first, what we need to do is go over to our filters. When I tap on Filter here, what I'm able to do is apply all these filters. I just swipe up, just like with adjustments. And you're going to see we have Vivid. We have Vivid Warm, a little bit of a 70s look to it. Looks like an old photo. Here's a little cooler look to it. So we have a lot of different adjustments here. Let's go back to 70s. When we apply a filter, we can adjust how much of that filter is applied. So I can swipe up and we can see that it is adjusting how much of that filter is being applied. And then if we go all the way down to the bottom, we do have a few black and whites. My favorite is the Noir. And again, if I swipe up here, you can see that it's adding a color back in there. I'm going to leave it at black and white there. Now what I would like to do is add a little more contrast to this. So now I go over to my adjustments and I swipe up here to my contrast. And I just take this adjustment, find a little more contrast to it, and let's go and apply that 
vignette. I swipe up. Now I'm at my vignette here, and we have a cool photo there. Might have added a little too much contrast there, but you get the idea behind it. Here is my original, and there's my edited version. So we can combine these different filters and adjustments. So that is how filters work. If you want to take a filter off of it, all you have to do is just go back to the top where it says original, and then it takes the filter off. It doesn't remove any of the other adjustments, so I still have my contrast adjusted, and it still has the vignette. All this did was remove the filter that I applied. Now let's take a look at how we can copy edits from one photo to another. So I've applied a filter to this. I've adjusted the contrast. I applied a vignette. I think it would be really cool if I applied that to this photo here as well. Well, instead of going in here and then editing it and then applying those edits manually, what I can do is I can copy the edits from this photo and apply them to that other photo. To copy the edits, what we need to do is go back over to our library. If I long press on this, this is how we do it, we long press on it, what it's going to do is lift that subject. That's not what I want to do. What I want to do is copy the edits. To copy the edits, what we do is we go back over to our library and then when I long press on this photo, being that I'm looking at my library, what I'm able to do is copy the edits. So you have to look at all of your photos to copy the edits. So I'm going to copy this. And now I'm going to apply those same edits, the contrast, the filter, the vignette, to this photo here. To do that, we just long press on it. And then we paste our edits and watch what happens. We now have my black and white photo. I can go in here and make further adjustments. Maybe this photo does need a little more contrast to it. So what I'm able to do is apply more contrast to this particular photo. So you can copy and paste edits from one to another and then further refine those. I'm going to tap on done here and it saves my photo. Now what about cropping and straightening photos? Well, let's go back over to my library here. And I have an album here where some of these photos need to be straightened. We'll first take a look at straighten and then we'll look at crop. So this photo right here needs to be straightened. I wasn't holding the camera steady when I took this photo. In order to straighten it, what we do is go back into our edit mode. And then what we need to do is go over to our crop and straighten tool here on the left. And when I click on it, we have straighten. This is where it goes to by default. So now all I need to do is just swipe up and down here and watch what happens. We get a nice tic-tac-toe board there. And what I'm able to do is straighten it out. And now my photo is straight. We can also, I'm going to reset it here so you can see this. We can also set the skew. When I do this, what it's going to do is make the top of the photo narrow. So it's going to bring it forward. So let's go ahead and go to my skew here. And you're going to see that it's bringing it forward. I go down, it brings it back or brings the bottom forward. So we can set that skew. We can also do left and right with this. So with this one here, what I'm able to do is change that skew there. Probably the most popular tool here is the straighten tool. We can also rotate it by 90 degrees. We've all had it where we take a photo and it's off by 90 degrees. And then I can also flip it. When I tap on this, it just flips it. So if you took a photo, a selfie, and the writing on your shirt is backwards, you can go in here and flip it, and then the writing will be normal. Now, in addition to that, we can also crop our photos from here. I'm going to go to a different photo, though. We're going to go to this photo here. I tap on it, and what I would like to do is crop this. Now, the reason why I want to crop it is I didn't really have this photo centered right or I didn't have the right angle here. I'm going to talk a little bit about rule of thirds here. This is a common tactic that photographers use, the rule of thirds. When I click on edit here, and then we go over to our cropping tool, what we're going to see when we crop it is a tic-tac-toe board. And what we want to do is have our horizon or our objects be where those lines intersect. So what I'm going to do is pinch. This is one way of cropping. I'm going to pinch here to zoom in 
and you're going to see we have a tic-tac-toe board here. I just have my intersection points. And what I want to do is line up my horizon with this line here. And what I'd like to do is have this line up right there. And that is following the rule of thirds. And now when I do that, when I tap on done, the photo is much more pleasing there. I'm not looking at half of the ocean here. So you're going to see that this is a common tactic. If you look at any photos or paintings or anything like that, you will probably see that the horizon lines up with the thirds there, the rule of thirds, that tic-tac-toe board. Or when you look at someone's face, a proper photo will have one of the eyes on one of those tic-tac-toe where they intersect. They're just following the rule of thirds. And what you're able to do is crop a photo and follow those same type of rules. In addition to that, we can pinch to zoom in. So now I can zoom in here a little bit further here. And if I pinch out, it zooms out. I can also take these corners here or the sides here and drag these to crop it to where I want. Now by default, this does not stick to any type of an aspect ratio. You can see I can grab a corner here and basically make it any way that I want. Well, let's say you wanted to make it stick to an aspect ratio. Maybe you want it to be 16 by 9. Maybe you want it to be for an iPhone. In order to do that, what you do is you go up to the top here, and then down at the bottom, once you click on it, you're going to see all of these different aspect ratios. So I want to crop this for an iPhone. I click on 16 by 9. But an iPhone is tall, right? So now what I do is I go over to the left here, click on it, and now what I'm able to do is crop this for an iPhone. And now I tap on done, and this will look great on an iPhone. So if you want to lock the aspect ratio, you just go up to the top, we turn on our aspect ratio, and then from here we can select what we want. If you're using Instagram, that uses square photos, you can go and crop it yourself by going to square. And then if you want to rotate it, you can do that, or rotate the uh, aspect ratio. So that's how we crop and straighten our photos. Now let's take a look at how we select a photo from a burst. For those of you that have an iPhone, which probably most of you do, you are probably aware that your iPhone can take a burst of photos. When it takes a burst of photos, what it does is it takes, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 photos, as long as you hold down the shutter button or swipe over to the right or left. I'm not exactly sure how it works. They change it around a little bit. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to take a number of different photos. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, if you just want to get the right action shot. So I have this photo here of this log ride. This is over at Disney, or I'm sorry, Universal Studios. And you can see it is 51 photos. Why is it 51 photos? Because I just wanted to get where that ride is just coming over the hump here, and I want to get it to where it is splashing. So I just held that shutter, and it took 50 photos. Now what I need to do is I need to find those photos, the photos that I want. So how do I do that? Well, basically, all we have to do is just go up to Select here. We don't go into Edit Mode. If I go to Select, what I'm able to do is select down at the bottom here from all of my different photos. So we can see it's coming down there. I want to keep this photo here. So I put a check mark here. I'm going to turn off this check mark. And what I'd like to do is, yeah, keep that one there. So I have a check mark there. So now what it's going to do is it's going to keep two different photos. And what I can have it do is throw away all of the other ones. Now when I do that, it does take that photo out of the burst these photos out of the burst, and it'll put them into the library. So right now, this is 51 photos, but in my library, it is one photo. It's a burst. If I were to tap on done here, what it would do is it would ask me if I wanted to keep everything or if I just wanted to keep the two photos. Now, I'm going to tap on cancel because I need to use this as a demo, but basically what you would do is you would say, just keep the two photos. It'll put those two photos into your library, and it'll delete all the other ones. It'll put them into the deleted album. You can always get it back from your deleted album, or I should say you have 30 days to get it back from your deleted album. So that's how you can separate those bursts. You just go in here and select which ones you want to save, tap on done, and just select save those two photos or three photos or however many you selected that you wanted to save.
Now let's take a look at live photos. This is another way of getting that perfect shot. I'm going to cancel this. Again, I need to save that for my demo. And now what I do is I go over to the left arrow here. And what I'm going to do is go to live photos here. Under live photos, I have this picture of my wife, Beth. She's Dutch dancing. And when I tap on this or long press on it, you're going to see her kick there. And what I would like to do is convert this live photo into a photo where she is kicking the highest. So right about there. How can I do that? Well, basically what we need to do is we need to go and edit this. We're going to edit the live photo. And remember how I mentioned that we can have new tools over here? Well, being that this is a live photo, what I can do is I can edit this live photo. Much like bursts, when I click on it, what I can do is select where I want that photo to be. So I just go and drag this, and right there is the highest. I click on Make Key Photo. This is key. We need to click on Make Key Photo. And now that is my photo. Now it's still a live photo. So when I tap on Done here, and I long press on it, it's still going to be a live photo. But when we're just looking at the photo, it's going to be that one frame that I selected. Now if I want to turn this into a regular photo, I don't want it to be a live photo anymore. I can do that as well. To do that, we go up to Edit, and then we go over to our Live Photo, and then we go up to Live here, and all we have to do is just turn it off, and now it is just a photo. It is not a live photo. I tap on Done, and if I long press on it, it doesn't do anything. I can zoom in. I can lift her up, being that I'm using iPad OS 16, but it is not a live photo anymore. Now there's one other trick with live photos that I like to use. When you have motion, let's go over to this merry-go-round here. This is a live photo. I'm going to tap and hold on it. You're going to see that it's going around there. Well, what we can do is we can make a long exposure out of this. To do that, all we have to do is just go to the upper left-hand corner, and you're going to see we have a few different options. We have loop. What this will do is this will just endlessly loop it. So now it's just going to go around, and it won't stop. It's just going to be a loop. We can also bounce it. So now it's just going to bounce back and forth. You're going to see it goes forward, and then back, and then forward. I can also, my favorite, long exposure it. This is great for water features as well as something like this. I tap on long exposure here. And now what it's going to do is make it a long exposure. Now when you take these types of photos, you want to make sure that the camera is held still. Let's go and take another look here. We're going to go to Taquanum Falls. This would be great as a long exposure. It's great for waterfalls. In order to do that, I just go to Live Photo. I'm going to tap and hold so you can actually see what it is. And I can make it loop. Kind of cool effect for a waterfall. It just never stops. And then when we go over to long exposure, this is one of my favorite for water features. We can see that it made a nice long exposure out of that. Again, try to hold your camera as still as possible for something like this. It really does make a cool effect. So that's how we edit our live photos. Let's take a look at portrait photos in the iPad. If you have an iPhone that can take portrait photos, which most of them can these days, I'm going to go to portrait here and we're going to take a look at Beth and I. With a portrait photo, what it does is it blurs the background. It adds a bokeh effect to it. Now it does this through computational photography. A photographer will actually do this through the lenses and they'll adjust the f-stop. Well, we can do this through the Photos app. We can adjust that f-stop after we've taken the photo because it's using computational photography. So I'm going to go to edit here. And again, being that this is a portrait, we have a new tool up here. And when we go over to our f-stop in the upper left-hand corner, we can see it's f4.5. What I'm able to do is adjust that f-stop. And watch the background as I adjust this. You're going to see that the background is getting clear and it is getting more blurry. But Beth and myself are staying the same. That is what a portrait mode is. It blurs the background, gives a little bokeh effect, 
but it keeps the foreground in focus. And then from here, what we're able to do is make further adjustments to it. We can also apply studio lighting. This is not a great photo for studio lighting, and I'm not really familiar with studio lighting, but what Apple tried to do through computational photography is apply effects that mimic studio lighting in a photographer's studio. When we apply our studio lighting, we can adjust how much of that studio lighting is applied, just like with any other adjustment or filter. I'm going to go back over to the original here. So that's how we work with our photos. And most of these tools that I showed you, I say most of them, obviously the bursts in the live photos will not work for videos, but all of those adjustments and filters and cropping and straightening you can do with videos. But in addition to that, what we're also able to do with videos is trim them. So what I'm going to do is go back over to my library here. And I have some videos here. This is the monorail coming in, but we can see it's coming in way back over there. So this makes it a long video. What I would like to do is trim that. So then the video starts right about, let's just say right about here. So it's not so long. I'm not waiting so long. So how can I do that? Well, basically what we do is we go to edit. And again, we have a new tool up here on the left side, being that's a video. And we can see all of our frames here. So what I'm able to do is just swipe and I can see all of the frames there. But in addition to that, if we go to the beginning or the end, what we're able to do is trim it. So I'm going to go to this tool here. I just drag it over and we're going to bring the monorail in right about there. And I can also trim the beginning so where it just disappears there. And when I tap on done, I do have two options here. I can save the video, which means it's going to overwrite the original video. So you want to make sure that you only select this if you're ready to delete the original video. You can also save it as a new video clip. So it's going to keep the longer version and then you're going to have the shorter version. So if you want to keep that longer version, maybe you want to edit it further down the road. What you'll want to do is save this as a new video clip. So that's basically how we trim our videos. Let's take a look at markup. We can also mark up our photos. I'm going to go to my photos here. And we're going to take a look at this photo here. And what I want to do is mark it up. This really works great if you have a pencil, an Apple Pencil. But you don't necessarily need to have an Apple Pencil. In order to mark up a photo, what we do is we go to Edit. And then up at the top, you're going to see we have these markup tools or a markup tool. When I click on this, what we have here is a little tray of tools. Now, before we take a look at these tools, I can move this tray around. All I have to do is just take it and drag it where I want. So now, let's say I wanted to mark up this photo here. All I have to do, I'm going to use my pencil here, but you can just tap on it with your finger as well. But all you have to do is just... Tap on the tool that you want. You're going to see I'm just tapping on the tools down at the bottom. This is an eraser. And then you just draw. And that's it. Pretty simple. We can, when we tap on it, make further adjustments to it. I can make it wider. I can have a little transparency to it. Maybe it's a little too transparent. Now it's going to be a little darker in there. I can adjust the color by going over to the right. Now it's blue. I can erase. And if I tap on the eraser, I can set how large the eraser is. If I want it to be just pixel, like a standard eraser, or with an object eraser, it's just going to erase whatever I tap, the last thing that I drew there. I also have a ruler in here, and I can take my fingers here and move this around. I can rotate it. So if you wanted to take measurements, you can do that. Tap on it to make it disappear. I can select. This will allow me to select something. So right now it just selected what I drew. I have my different colors here. I also have a plus here where I can go and add a description. I can add text. I can add a signature. I have a magnifier. Let's go to a different photo here. I'm going to show you the magnifier in a different photo. Discard. And we're going to go to this photo here. And what I would like to do is zoom in on his face here a little bit. So I'm at my markup tools. I go to the plus, and then what we do is we go to magnifier here, 
and watch what happens. We have a little magnifier here, and what I'm able to do is take the green one here to zoom in and out, but also what I'm able to do is take the blue one here and make it larger. So let's go ahead and make this larger. There we go. And if I wanted to zoom in and out, I could do that, zoom out there a little bit. And now I just zoomed in to his face. And if I wanted to further mark it up, I could do that. Tap on done. It does save that. You can see it is saved in the photo. But if I did want to revert back to the original, I can do that as well. I just go up to edit. I go to revert and it'll remove any markups that I made to it. So that is how we edit our photos with the Photos app. I should say photos and videos with the Photos app on the iPad. As you can see, it is really quite extensive. It's not as much as the Mac. We can do more with the Mac, but we can actually do quite a bit with the iPad. And if you have an iPhone, you can use these same tools on the iPhone. They're in a little different layout. I'll have a separate video on that, but basically you can do the same thing with the iPhone. So that is how we edit our photos and videos on the iPad with the Photos app.